Yep. Good morning, I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you've just tuned into the Morning Devotion. We're here to encourage you through the Word so that you can be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you would anoint your Word today. Yes. Lord, your Word is what brings change in our life. Your Word is that sharp two-edged sword that cuts right to the meat of the matter. Lord, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that you would take your word today. Lord, and that our hearts would be fertile soil to receive it. Bind the hand of the enemy that would distract it and take it away. Lord, let the cares of this life not affect your word in our hearts. Lord, and I pray, God, for hard hearts that they be softened to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's a reference to the sower went forth to sow. And some of the seeds fell among this, that, and the other thing. Cool story, but that's another message. Yeah. Yesterday, kind of the thing that we Left talked about with. in Hebrews 3, um, we I think it's where we started, it was in 3.7. Um, I'm gonna skip, it says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. You know, we're talking about making sure that our hearts stay right. Um, not to let our hearts get hardened. Yeah. So, and we fin we and we finished off with chapter four of Hebrews, the last half of verse number seven. It says, "Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts." It goes right along with the sower went forth to sow. A hard heart, Jesus said, is like throwing your garden seeds on a rock. Mm -hmm. It may spring forth, but the roots are going to have no place to go. And when the sun comes out and problems happen, it's going to wither away and die. And I, for one, am praying that your heart would be fertile soil so that it would not wither away and die. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that parable covers, well, you got only a one in four chance. It doesn't lay out the percentages of each one because that's just not the way a pie graph works. A pie graph can have 89% in one of grants. Now, just pray because it's up to you where the seeds fall. Yeah, you know, the thought came to me this morning that uh, as I was preparing for today to finish what we started yesterday and thinking about the children of Israel in the desert, you, know, you can be in the middle of great things that God is doing, in the middle of His miracles, and still allow your heart to get hardened. Mm -hmm. They had seen God do so many miracles. Children, well, she's talking about the children, the children of, Israel. of Israel. Yeah, but yet they let their hearts be hardened. Don't allow yourself to be in the middle of all things that God is doing, and be left out because your heart yeah. is getting hardened. Offenses can harden it. Bitterness, unforgiveness. Yeah. All these things. Envy. I mean, looking at others and thinking, well, that's not fair. Why? Why don't, do they don't get even it? allow those thoughts to come in. Why do the wicked prosper? Yeah, you, we can't. We can't allow those things to come in because they will harden your heart. And you can miss out on the greatest blessings that God has ahead for you. We may go through some trials here, but this is not our permanent home. This is not what we're building for. We're building for eternity. And God has an awesome eternity for you. So don't be like those that were over 20 in the, in the wilderness that God had done so many things for. I mean, provided manna from heaven, quail. I mean, it's just miracle after miracle. And yet, in the midst of all that, they allow their hearts to get hardened. Amen. So Can I start at verse 12? Uh, yeah. Okay. Verse 12 says this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, after she just talked about what happened with the children of Israel, how that they let their heart get hardened and, and they were missing the point. They had God's word, the tablets mm -hmm. of stone that went out. So this is what it says in Hebrews. There's only a few verses. So if you would permit me to read 12 through 16, and then we'll talk about that yeah. real quick. This is what it says. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. 
Can I read that now in this version real yes, quick? Yes, read that. In the New King James, it says it like this. Verse 13 or verse 11? Uh, starting with 12. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are, things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. There's a seeing, that seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For Listen we, to that. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us. We like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What Amen. a wonderful set of verses with such great promises to them. Yes. That, that Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus has been here. Jesus experienced the things that we experience, yes. the culture. The culture back then was similar to the culture that we have now. Yeah. People are the yeah. same, almost always. The Ten Commandments are, are still the same and still apply, and we're dealing with the yeah. same things because God doesn't change. And God knows where you are, what you're going through, and He, if you'll turn to Him, has provided a way of escape. But yes. we must turn to Him. We can't sit in the midst of our troubles. We can't wallow in the midst of our sorrow mm -hmm. and, and the mud and think that our situation is gonna get better. We must rise up. We must stand on the word of God yes. and move toward him because the destination of where we are going is eternity with God. Mm -hmm. And we are walking that way. We are moving that way. And as we go, we are telling people about our journey yes and that's what our christianity is about where are we heading we're heading to eternity with god how are we going by following god's word that has been laid out for us who are we taking with us whoever wants to come along yes. will god sort out those that are, are are just along for the ride and those who are are wholeheartedly part of the journey yes yeah, god will take care of that it's not our place to judge other people God's word is great and mighty, and it'll touch your lives. We're running out of time. Do you have a closing thought? Yeah. Romans 14, 11 and 12 says this. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Amen. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. One day every knee will bow. One day every tongue shall confess. Amen. We'll stand before God. With Jesus, you can stand in his righteousness, with his forgiveness, and just stand with joy before the Amen. Lord. But those who have not, it's a different story. I think the mosquito truck is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Keep a praise song in your heart. And rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today, 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. God bless. We love you. We'll see you.